Today, it's my privilege to have with me Kelly Twigger from ESI Attorneys in Colorado, who has an awesome iPad app that I got to play with and learn about last week, and I liked it so much I decided to do a podcast with her on our uh, podcast channel and YouTube channel and talk about what she's made. Uh, Kelly, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Josh. I really appreciate you having me on today. Um, as you mentioned, I'm, uh, I'm the principal at ESI Attorneys, uh, which is a law firm that is all about e-discovery and information law. And uh, we recently moved to Colorado about a year ago, uh, where I live here with my family and three kids. And uh, my practice is, is sort of split into two ways. One is um, really helping clients, organizations, and law firms uh, deal and prepare for providing information in, in litigation. And on the other side is really acting as e-discovery counsel in litigation for my clients. So that's kind of what our practice looks like. Um, we love it here in Colorado, so we're pretty excited. And for the last two years, we've been working on this iPad app, uh, which we'll look at, called the e-discovery assistant. And I found that uh, I got so many calls for people asking me how to get started or saying that they were too afraid to start with e-discovery. So a lot of what we designed the iPad app for is to be able to help them get started. Groovy. Well, I've just made you the presenter, so why don't we uh, fire up the emulator and, and tell us what you're going to use to share uh, the iPad app uh, on Zoom. Okay. Uh, I am using an application called Squirrel, uh, which you can download uh, easily from the Internet. It works uh, specifically for Macs. I'm not sure if it's a Windows also application, uh, but it's fantastic and it's super easy. You download it, fire it up, and it automatically gives you the option to use your uh, Mac for AirPlay. So it's essentially simulating AirPlay that you can do from any iOS device onto your Apple TV or whatever. Um, so, kind of using this, um, this is how we're going to kind of look at the app today. Ruby. You want me to go ahead and, and walk through it a little bit, Josh? Yeah, yes, and I see we have a few apps in common. I know TestFlight well. Uh, yes, TestFlight is what we built the app on, so mm -hmm. that's, a really, that's a good one. Um, well, I also really like the Legal Technology News app. That's a good one, too, and I use everything through Flipboard these days, so... And it'd be interesting to see what's in your Netflix queue. So, but let's uh, uh, all children's shows. I have to tell you, oh. not, probably not anything too exciting. Um, so this is the eDiscovery Assistant. Um, this is the dashboard for the app. Uh, essentially, what we created are six different types of content within the app, and then two ways for the user to be able to manage the content within the app. Um, do you want me just to walk through a couple of those, Josh? Yeah. Okay. Let, let's see. Let's see what, how this works, and from the library to the rules to the case digest and the uh, checklists. Okay, so the, the two ways really for users to use to manage their own content, and you can put any of the content that's in the app into these places, are to use um, My Library or My Matters. And when you open up My Library, I've populated My Library with content already. Um, it will allow you to populate it very easily with um, any kind of content. So if we go back to the dashboard and say we start with the rules. Um, the rules that we have included here are the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, um, all U.S. District Court rules, whether it's local rules, um, orders that specific judges have within the U.S. District Court, everything that is available um, through the beginning of June right now um, is included in the app. And as you're going through the app, if you're a user and you um, see information that we don't have, uh, we'd love for you to shoot us an email. If you look on the bottom of the screen um, within any uh, rule, for instance, this is Rule 16, you see this little white feedback button here. And that will send us an email. So if you say, hey, I see a typo, or hey, I would really like to see this included in here, send that to us, and that, that cues us to be able to add information. So um, within the rules, um, you'll see different tabs of information. This is the full text of Rule 16. Um, and then within the rules, we also have what we call an e-discovery toggle that allows you to see um, the the portions of the rule that are specific and important to e-discovery. So 
So we've also got a summary for the uh, federal rules of civil procedure and some of the state rules. I've created individual summaries for you to know exactly what you should pay attention to. Um, we've also got committee notes and then related information, which are um, all the information that we've tagged from throughout the app um, to what's relevant to this rule. So, for instance, for Rule 16, you've got legal hold notice. If you click on that, you go right to the legal hold notice template. So going back to the dashboard, um, if we look into the case digest, the database that we have here for the case digest roughly includes about 3,200 cases right now. And we're adding new cases every day as decisions come out. We have a number of places that we gather information from and searches set up on various sites and people such as Josh who blog about um, great things that are happening. And, and that gives us, you know, the information that we need to include here. So within the case digest, you can sort them by jurisdictions, um, whether federal or state, um, and you can sort them by tags. Um, I've hand created a list of issue tags. Uh, that we use to tag our cases and we try to keep that really under control so that we um, have a really nice taxonomy that we're using um, regularly for the app. So for each of these case digests what you get is a handcrafted case digest from me. Um, I do have some reviewers that work with me but I review and make sure everything is the way we want it to be before it goes into the app. And the idea is to help guide your research. So for instance if we look at the um, Rajala case um, this is a really important case when it comes to um, the FRE 502D order, which essentially allows you to claw back information. And we've tried to make sure you know that right at the outset of the rule. And again, you'll see related information uh, for each case um, that could be of different types, templates, cases, rules. Uh, kind of going back to the dashboard, we also have checklists and templates, and I'll kind of go through those quickly. But the goal here is to help provide checklist for lawyers to get started in conducting the e-discovery process. There are a lot of vendors out there who sell products that are designed to handle the data. They're designed to collect the data, handle the data, convert it, put it in a review platform for you. That's not what the e-discovery assistant is about. We're about helping you with the process, helping lawyers get started to conduct electronic discovery. That's what we want to do. So, um, you know, on the checklist, you'll see individual items. This particular list is meant to be the overview of how to conduct electronic discovery. Um, and if you see these little light bulb icons on the sides, we've created tips. Um, for instance, on this one, it's review the rules and summaries before to make sure you understand your obligations. And the tip here is look at the committee notes, because particularly with regard to the federal rules of civil procedure, there's a lot of good stuff in the committee notes that you want to make sure you understand. Um, templates are, these are constant, we're constantly adding content. I, you know, I added four new cases last night and we've got four or five templates that we're working on putting in here right now, including some BYOD materials. Um, our, you know, different policies, we've got U.S. District Court materials, the information that you need to, to do the legal hold process. Um, and so a lot of things that you'll see as you go through here and a lot of these templates will be tagged as related information for rules and checklists so that you can go through the process. Um, and then we've got some resources for you, a glossary. If there's a term you're not really sure what it means, um, we've tried to create for you what we consider to be English definitions. Um, so, you know, so you can know. Of course, most people know what Facebook is, but not everybody. My dad's not on Facebook, so he doesn't know. Um, and then we've also created a resources library. Um, and in the resources, we're again constantly adding information, but what we've tried to do is go through and provide information that's available out there and pull it all into one place so that you can reference it when you need to. And this is a place where we really want uh, to have impact, input from users on here's something I'd really like to see there. Um, we've had some requests already to put um, Sedona Conference materials there, and we're going to try to work with the Sedona Conference about that. Um, but of course, a lot of materials are copyrighted. So that's not always something we can do. Um, the other thing that we see in the resource is also the ability to do Ask ESI. Um, we set up what we call our buy the glass solution when we have clients who want to ask a few questions about what to do with their case, but they don't know how to do it. Um, you can access that through the app as well. 
Um, the last content piece that you can do is to be able to manage um, all of this information through My Matters. So, for instance, I've created four matters here, and when I've got in, I can create a summary of the case. I can add my particular notes with my from my depositions, um, my witness interviews. I can look at the checklist that I've added to the matters from this specific matter from within the app. Um, and then you can see here, you can go out and add a case digest if you want to. If I wanted to scroll down here and find a Colorado case, because this one's in Colorado, um, then I might find the Ortega case and add it that one. Whoops, that's an email. And I would just download that and add it to my matters. So, and then when you go back to the matter, you'll find that it's right in there under the case digest. So that's a, a very quick overview of, of what the app looks like. Again, you know, this is our first iteration of putting it out there. We really are interested in having some user feedback on how people like to use it. Um, it incorporates, Josh, what we use every day in our practice. And so our goal was to put what we use out there for everybody else. It's a beautiful app. I was very impressed with it. I was very glad when your colleague emailed me about it because I had not heard about it, and it was fun to play with it. Okay. And it was it was neat because she emailed me on a Tuesday, and that Thursday I was doing my first iPad app for litigator presentation when I was in Minneapolis at Shepherd Data, and the folks that I showed it to liked it. So it was it was fun, and I, I need to spend more time with it and learn more about it, but I was really impressed uh, with it, and I'm glad you know you had time to actually come on board and, and show us some things. Well, I really appreciate the opportunity. So thanks very much. Well, let's have since you know this is a geek podcast. Let's let's get geeky. And since we're both attorneys, and after chatting with you, I I know you have a serious geek card that you can play as well. So start with the law. Favorite case law quote pertaining to e-discovery? Oh, now that's really geeking out on me here. Um, I would have to say, and I'm, I wouldn't be able to paraphrase it at this point, but if I looked back at the Mancia case that Judge Grimm wrote that basically says lawyers need to cooperate, um, that has to be my favorite because my whole, everything that I practice and is built on is, you know what, if we sit down and talk about this and we understand what we're doing when it comes to e-discovery and you get qualified people to talk to each other, then we can do this efficiently and effectively and we don't have to spend millions of dollars for it. I just think that's, that's what's important. And so I really liked what Judge Grimm had to say in the Mancia case. It's a very important one and a really good case as well. Mm -hmm. Now, science fiction, because I know you got credibility there. Favorite sci-fi show? Uh, I'm going to have to go movie, and I'm going to have to go completely Star Wars. Okay. I'm all Star Wars. I'm all about Yoda, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo. What woman is not about Han Solo? I mean, really. He's a scruffy nerf herder. I That's mean, right. How could you not be into that? He shoots first, and, and justifiably so for self-defense reasons. Right. Yeah, well, maybe. But I would hope you actually have the T-shirt that says, Episode four comes first. It's good parenting. You know, my son has it. My 10-year-old has it. I do not have a copy of it myself because I've never actually seen it made in women's sizes. Really? Interesting. No. If you come across it, you'll have to let me know. I, I will shoot you an email right away and tweet that out because that, that should be standard. Right. And finally, since we are products of the 1980s, favorite 80s band and why? Oh, when we talked about this, it's all Duran Duran for me. has to be Duran Duran, all about Simon LeBon, and it's uh, very odd because I ended up marrying a Brit named Simon. So we can go on about the Freudianness of that, but it was all Duran Duran for me, and it's still on my iPod. Right, justifiably so. Whether it is Rio or Hungry Like the Wolf or right. my favorite, A View to a Kill. Yes. Which... The film focused on Silicon Valley and the computer industry and trying to cause an earthquake, which is a wonderful e-discovery tie-in from a James Bond perspective. <laughs> so just to show a little geek credibility there. 
So, well, Kelly, thank you so much. And I look forward to, you know, potentially doing a few more of these. We can talk about native file productions and uh, all kinds of other stuff. And thank you so much and uh, wish you success with uh, eDiscovery Assistant. Great. Thanks so much, Josh. I really appreciate you having me on. And um, I think you were going to maybe throw the, the website on uh, the YouTube video, but just if I can mention it for folks who are interested in seeing more about the app um, before they go to the iTunes store, uh, it's available at ediscoveryassistant.com, and you can see videos and screen captures and, and see all the features that are available there, too. Definitely check it out, and thank you so much. Thanks, Josh. Take care.